this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can use the live boolean system inside of ZBrush to knock out some very large primary forms. Now I'm going to also show you an additional tool set where we're going to use array meshes so we can add additional details like this. But at this stage it might not be necessary for that. But we'll go ahead and take a look at it and that could become a new tool that you could use to knock out some bigger primary forms as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's make a brand new project together. I'm going to go ahead and hit the comma key, or you can hit this light box icon that you see right here. And that will bring up the light box. And let's just go to the project area. And you can see that there should be a Dynamesh Dynasphere 128. And that's just the resolution. There's one for 32 and also 64. But we're going to use this 128. Go ahead and double click on that and load this up. If you've got a project open, it's going to ask you if you want to save. I'm going to say no for that. And so this should give us um, just the sphere that we're looking at. Now with the version of ZBrush that I'm using, they've added this uh, widget over here that tells you kind of if you're facing front or not. If you're using a past version, you won't see that. And it might be a little bit confusing for you to know exactly where you're facing. Sometimes to get my bearings, um, if I tap X and make sure I've got symmetry turned on, you might just take maybe like the standard brush. And uh, again, you can always just go B and then S and then find standard there by clicking this. So however you want to navigate to that, I would suggest using something like making your own custom interface. And you can find mine pretty easily by just doing a search for Nick Zook and then go to Gumroad. And I've got uh, my interface readily available for you to take and use that. So that might make it a little bit easier for you to uh, get to the brushes and things. So I'm just going to make two little uh, marks right here on the model. And that'll just tell me that this is front facing and this is left and right. Again, since they've added this, this is going to make it way easier for you to do that. And we can come over to the subtool area and we can open and close these by doing this. I'm just going to rename this and just call this Start Sphere like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this. Um, what I'm going to do is use what ZBrush has in here for creating a brand new geometry type that's really supposed to be used with the Z Modeler tool set. But what they allow you to do is create um, with the initialize down here, you can either make a cube or a cube sphere or a cube grid. And that makes it really easy for you to make uh, basic geometry that way. I'm going to, I like to turn on the solo button for this. Uh, and when I, when I use the solo button, I've actually made a hotkey for this alt plus S and you can get a hold of the hotkeys at the same time if you download my interface. So it should make it nice and easy for you to, uh, follow along with this. I use this quite a bit. So that's, uh, why I think a hotkey comes in handy for that. I'm just going to turn this into a Q cube and we'll use the, two by two by two resolution. So you can see what we've got here. We'll turn on polyframe. And if you hover your cursor over any of these, you can see the hotkeys for this stuff. So if you want to start using hotkeys, uh, that will greatly speed up your workflow. So that one's shift F for that. So here's what we've got for this uh, Q cube. Now, if we change the resolution on this, um, and if we did something like 12, and hit Q cube again, you can see it's going to make a, um, obviously a different piece of geometry, but give us more divisions, but it's going to change the uh, scale of things quite a bit. So I'm just going to go back to this Q cube of two and hit Q cube like this. And then I'm going to go and say, uh, just say standard cube like this. Uh, and then we can go ahead and duplicate that. And then I'm going to rename this pillar. And I'm going to go back down to the uh, initialize area. Now with the f interface, if you want to have multiple parts of the interface open at the same time, you can see how I'm clicking and dragging and I'm able to drag to the bottom down here. If I hold down shift, I can go to initialize and then open that part and have that open at the same time as I have maybe my subtool stack open. Um, I'm not sure which version they've add this, but you can see the visible count for the subtool area. You can decrease that. So if you want to make this uh, window a little bit smaller, you can do that. And then at that point, that's going to allow us to see the subtool and this initialize, but might have to drag it down a little bit smaller, maybe to about six there. And so with the resolution of my uh, monitor and everything I've got going on for the layout of this, this should make it uh, easy to be able to see everything I'm on the interface at that point. So for the pillar, I'm going to go back to this and then change this to a 12 and then hit uh, Q cube. And then what we've got here, you can only see this one because I have solo turned on. If I take solo off, 
we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hide the uh, start sphere. And then just to get an idea of like what we're working with with scale, uh, I'm going to use this pillar. And then uh, you should have this in your version of ZBrush. Uh, you, you put it on the move tool and you have the gizmo tool turned on. If not, then you'll have the uh, transpose tool. And the transpose tool is a lot more complicated to use. Um, I've used it enough where I think it's fairly easy for me to use and I can get all the usage out of it. So there's different ways of using this for movement and scale and everything. But again, I think it is a bit more complicated. So if you just want to put it on the gizmo 3D, and then what we can do with this tool, if you've got it in symmetry mode, and I'll go ahead and um, hit Alt S for me for my solo button there. If we hold down Alt and then click on here on this waypoint icon, it's going to try to put it in the center of this object. But because we have symmetry turned on, it's going to put it in the symmetry center right here. So if I tap X and then hold down Alt and then click, it's going to put it directly in the center of the object. Now at that point, I can either rotate um, on these different axes. I could uh, move, but then I'm interested in taking this and scaling this up. But at this point, I do want to see the cube. I want to get this the same size as the cube that you see here. And so you can see we would need a scale of, it would be really close to um, six. Now, if you want a numeric value to scale with, you can scroll down here to the deformation area and open that up. And then with, within deformation, they have a lot of different uh, tools that you can use on here. But there is one for size, and we do have X, Y, and Z turned on. So if we drag the slider like this, I can drag it up once and scale it up twice. And then I need to figure out what this number would be. And so it looks like it will be 50. So I'm just going to hit undo real quick. And then I can just click in here and type 50. And then now I've got that scaled to the uh, the scale that I'm looking for. So something else, I want this pillar to sit directly on the floor. Now with uh, what they show with the draw, and here you can see this negative elevation that they've got, it will actually always keep changing the floor to be the bottom of whatever your bottom subtool is. Um, I don't want that functionality. What I want to do is I want it to go to the very, very bottom of the home area. So one thing you can do is with this gizmo tool, if you hold down alt, you can click and drag and you can move the pivot point of it. So if I do something like this, you can see we can rotate about that pivot point there. Um, if you ever want to get the um, pivot point back to the home location, if you hit this, you can see it's going to move the pivot and it's going to move the object. If I hold down Alt and click the house icon, then it's going to throw this right here like this. So this is this line right here is exactly where uh, the ground plane sits. Now in ZBrush, you can tap P to turn on and off perspective. So you can see I'm going to flatten out my perspective so I can just look straight onto this in an orthographic view. Um, another thing that they've got, you can turn on transparency and you can see through some of your objects and you can turn on ghost if that helps. So sometimes you might want to have that ability to kind of see through things and that can help. So if I go back to the pillar and I'm going to, again, try to get this thing uh, to the very bottom of this, I could eyeball this and do that, but um, that's not exactly what I want to do. I want to try to have everything be exact, uh, as exact as I possibly can. So what they have is offset. So you could use offset, and this will offset in X. What we want to do is push it and offset it in Y. So I'm going to go ahead and push this up right here and I'll just push it all the way to the negative 100. And then at that point, I can push it up again and try to see if I could find this value. And it looks like maybe I'm going to try negative 20. Yep. And so that'll get me right to the very bottom of this at that point. And then now I'm going to go ahead and go to my subtool. I'll go to the standard cube. And then I could push this up to the, uh, the very top. Um, now, if I if I wanted to be exact with this, again, we can go to deformation and we can do offset and I might have to put this back on Y for this and then I'll do a negative 100 and do a negative 100 and then I'll have to push this and then again, that'll be a negative 20 and that will get me a cube 
right at the very top of this thing okay so I know that takes just a little bit to kind of get this set up and you're getting introduced to a lot of different tools at that point um, but I think once you once you've get got this set up um, it'll be easier for us to render and make sure everything's set for our floor now our floor is not sticking to the bottom of this and this is because I was telling you about uh, it looks at even if it's hidden this sphere that we have in here is at the um, at the very bottom here so what we could do is just we could select the sphere and we could move it up and then rotate and you can see now our, our uh, ground plane is set in the right area I'm going to turn transparency off if you don't need it anymore you can go ahead and head, hit delete but just go ahead and make sure that you have your orientation correct at this point it might not be that big of a deal um, I think we can go ahead and delete it and we'll go ahead and hit OK one thing that can help you with the orientation is if you see this little marker on the uh, on the floor here you can see that this is going to be this blue is going to be pointing um, down the z-axis so that could definitely help you kind of remember where your orientation is for things so the next thing we're going to do I'm going to start taking this cube I'm going to duplicate it and we're going to use this cube in a way to do a live boolean and we're going to get some cuts going on in this area and get some separation between these pieces so let's go ahead and hit duplicate for this and I'm going to rename this and call this cut 01 like this and then I'll just move this down I'll hold on alt and then click on this this will give us the center point right here like that so I'm going to try to move this down and I'm going to try to get it an exact uh, movement down from this top cube so I'll go ahead and turn transparency back on and then at this point then we'll use deformation and then I'll do an offset of Y and then push this down like this but let me go ahead and turn on ghost let me see if ghost will get me to where I can see that top cube and it's not so I'm just gonna turn off the pillar and at that point I don't need transparency on um, I'll just go ahead and use deformation and let's go ahead and do the offset and see what we need for this so this should be uh, 40 We'll push this down and so then now we're nice and even with that and I'll turn this back on within here and then with this cut what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way to duplicate this thing four times around and we can use uh, an array mesh to do that um, before I do that I think I'm going to push this off to the side just like this and I'm going to show you uh, masking so if we hold on control and then drag off the model we can get a mask and if we hold on spacebar we can move that thing around like this and so I'm just gonna position it here and drag it right in through there and that will mask those points there and if I hold on control and click in the open viewport that'll give me the inverse of that mask now at this point if you hold on alt click on the uh, go to the unmasked mesh center it'll push it right here and then we can drag these two points and scale it down just like this so this is what I'm going to use to push into the model and uh, have it do a negative cut to turn on the live booleans we just need to enable live booleans here and then put this little icon in here for doing a negative cut now as we're in the uh, polyframe mode you can see it's gonna it's gonna potentially look a little bit a little bit odd for us let me go ahead and push this up in the stack and let me push this right underneath of it like this so what I just showed you here is these will uh, take whatever's in the subtool stack and you can push it up in the subtool stack and this will push things down into the subtool stack like this now that this is live this is the pretty cool part about it is that you can you can actually view a, a live preview of this and exactly what it looks like and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna push this up right and through here and we're actually able to see with this live boolean I have a positive shape underneath this negative and so this is um, this negative shape is only affecting this thing because it sits down below it and it's not affecting this cube that sits above it so that can be a nice way for us just to kind of figure out maybe where we want to have this thing positioned 
And then I'll turn on polyframe again, and if this helps you kind of understand what's going on with that shape and what you're doing with it, you can take a look at it that way. Now you can see that we've got some Z fighting, and we want the shape to extend past this a little bit, so all I'm going to do is just scale it out this way, just a little bit like that. And then the next step, we're going to turn on the array mesh for this, so we're going to duplicate it four times and rotate it around the Y axis. So let's go ahead and go to Array Mesh and then open this up. Remember, if you hold down Shift, you can click on the Array Mesh and open that up and have this panel open at the same time that you see your subtools. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Array Mesh, and then I'm going to have it repeat uh, four times around. So we'll do Repeat and set that to four. And any of these things, if you want to type in a specific value, you can just click right in here with your mouse and then say Repeat. And then at that point, I'm going to do put it on rotate, and I'll tell it to rotate 360 degrees. Now we've got this thing going on here where um, this definitely is going to look odd for uh, what we're doing, um, and it's going to look wrong. If we do this lock position, lock size, we can take this and start to push it out, kind of like this. And I'm going to drag it in. I can just make sure that these things intersect with each other a bit. And um, I'm just rotating the camera. And if I hold down Shift while I rotate the camera, it'll snap to a top view. And remember, if we tap P, we can turn off perspective for that. So while we're in this mode here for this lock position and size, um, we're able to freely move this and kind of change this pattern. If we turn off lock position and we move, it's going to move the entire thing together. Now if I hold down Alt and click on the, the waypoint like this for this, um, we're going to get that. And it's going to push me back here. And I'll just try to go right here. We'll turn this back on for lock position and then we'll push push these in again. And then we can start to get a preview of what this is going to do and how much of the surface it's going to actually knock out. And if we scale this up, you can see what it's going to do with that surface. So I just want something that looks about like this if you want you can actually scale it down too so it's really up to you there i'm not i'm not specifying what you're going to have to do for the design or anything else like that it's really up to you for what you want to create and so i'm going to go ahead and then pull this down if you remember we can actually see this thing just hit and that cube kind of holds up there so if you see this changing right in this area that's going to give you a visual kind of clue as to uh making sure you got all that cube on top. So I think that's going to work for me on this. Um, so if we click off of this, turn off the polyframe, we can see exactly kind of what's going on with this at this point. We really don't need that cube to even be turned on for that. Okay, so that's going to give us a nice starting point. The next thing I'm going to do is start knocking out some shapes from here, all right? So I'm going to take this standard cube. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hold on Alt, click to the center point of it. I'm going to duplicate this and then call it um, cube top cut like this. I'll go ahead and use this button to push it up in the stack a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to turn it into a negative shape. And you can see because we're, that shape almost matches exactly, it's like it's trying to make the whole thing disappear. Now if I start pulling it forward, you can see what's going to happen with it. And then I'm going to scale it down a bit so we can get a nice thick border around there. And then depending on how far you have it pulled out is how much is going to be subtracted from that shape. And this is the whole power of the whole live Boolean system is that you're able to interactively take a look at this stuff and make judgment calls about the design and it's non-destructive. So you can always uh, rechange these pieces at any time. So I'm going to take this uh, cube top cut and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call this cube bottom cut. And I'm going to just hit rename. I don't like it to have that number at the back, so I'll get rid of that. And then now I can go ahead and push this thing down. If we want to visualize it and visualize it this way, we can go ahead and push this like this. Okay. 
And I think I'll do something like that. And then I'll just take this and turn it into a negative shape. And then now we've got everything that we want to get rid of for these cuts here. Now, if we want to turn these into positive shapes and I'm just going to have like a rim left on here, that's pretty easy for us to do as well. So we can just duplicate this and instead of saying cube top cut, let's go ahead and rename it. And I'll call this cube top add like this. And then I'm going to scale this thing down this way and then push it, push it in. Now, if we go to the side and tap P, we can move this off and try to make sure we're getting this as close to the edge as possible. Because we're doing a like a the stone pillar, I'm not entirely too worried about having like super, super exact uh, thicknesses and stuff like that. So. Um, not a big deal for that. So we've got this top add and let's go ahead and duplicate this and then rename it. Let's call this bottom. And I'll push the arrow key over there, get rid of that. And then I can push this down in the stack just for organization. So it sits underneath the bottom cut like this. So we know the width and everything is good here. Uh, what we can do is just scale this thing up. I'll tap P, so I'm looking straight onto this. And just scale this up this way. And it looks like we're pretty good on the thickness in through here. Like that. So I think that's going to work pretty good for us. I'll tap P for this. Okay, now that we have everything set up, I do want you to just recall that we have the ability now to, in a live mode, select different components and change elements of the design. So if you wanted, let's say, these gutters to not be so thick, we can take that top cube cut and then pull it out this direction uh, a little bit. We could take the uh, cube bottom cut and we could pull that out as well. So you're gonna get an interactive look at the design choices that you're making here and you remember if you don't like maybe the gutter and how big this is within this center part you could take these uh, center cuts and we could move those up and down we could also scale scale these things this way uh, sorry that was a rotate and if I go back to this if we want to change anything about uh, this design we could actually mask out the center part and maybe hold that and then scale this at this point and we can see what's going to happen with the design from there. Also if I wanted to hold uh, maybe these points in the center so maybe I want them a little bit closer together but I want that angle to be more steep we could hold down control and then mask these points as well and then now when we scale it's going to hold that and then make that uh, that cut or that wedge even larger. So I'm just going to go push this down just a little bit and through here. I want to I want to figure out, I'm going to turn off the um, the polyframe so we can just look at just the model at that point and where that sits. So I think that would be pretty good for this. Now, the other thing I, I didn't quite show you just yet is if we take this cube bottom cut and we want to move this at the same time as this piece here, it's possible that you can turn on this icon and it'll allow you to move multiple things at the same time. So you have to select the models that you want to move. So if I hold on control and shift and then click on this, um, I have to select that model at the same time. And then I'm going to need the cube uh, cut as well. Uh, the only problem is in this Boolean mode, it might be hard to select it, so we might have to make that a positive real quick and then hold down Control and Shift and select it. And then now I can turn that to a negative, and we should be moving both of those pieces at the same time. 
So again, that was probably a little bit confusing for you if you hold down Control and Shift and then we just drag out where we don't have anything kind of selected and you can see everything's solid. So that means we should be moving a, a lot of different pieces all at the same time. It didn't move those cuts because we do have a mask on there. To release a mask, you can hold down Control and then just drag on it. And so now you can see we're dragging and moving everything together as, um, as a unit like that. It didn't move the center cuts because that's an array mesh, so that's a little bit of a different case. But again, if I want to move um, this this cube um, bottom part here, I can hold down Alt and then click on that, and that will actually select it in the in the uh, subtool stack. So we've got this cube bottom add, and I want to add the cube bottom cut. So we'll put it on this uh, this multiple icon. Hold down Control and Shift, and that's going to select that one model. I want to be able to see this model, hold down control and shift and select it, and then I'll turn off the visibility. And then now at that point, we should be able to move these two together as uh, a unit at that point. Okay, and so I'm going to turn this off and put it back in the regular mode that we're uh, used to looking at. And then at that point, I'm just moving one particular object at one time. So I'm going to let you spend a little bit of time and it's up to you to come up with whatever that design is that uh, that you're going to be pushing through. But I think for me I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and leave this as a pretty good design. I'll hit shift R to do a best possible render real quick and then just check out the uh, shading on this and we'll start the video back up and we'll take a look at array meshes. So let's go ahead and take a look at using the array mesh to make some design patterns. The first one that we'll look at is maybe making a circular design pattern up top. So what I'm going to do is get the cube top uh, add. So I'm going to hold down Alt and then click on that, or we can go find through the subtool stack this cube top add. And I'll just go ahead and duplicate this, and I will call this, uh, I'll rename it, and I'll call this cube top array version 01 like this and I'm going to go ahead and drag this cube out. I know I'm going to have the size of this be fairly small like this. Somewhere in that vicinity um, we'll go ahead and be able to alter this and change it as we see fit in just a little bit. I'm just going to push it into the um, into the design just like this. I know I'm going to use this as a negative shape in the future, so that's why I'm kind of getting that set up and just pushing it in just a little. But at this point, let's go ahead and open up the array mesh area. So I'm going to hold down Shift and open this up. I'll close down geometry and we can hold down Shift and open up subtools. So we should be able to have array mesh and subtool visible at the same time. I'll click array mesh and this will enable the array mesh. And what we're going to do is set to repeat. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put a value of 16 on here. And then I'm going to put this on rotate. And then I'm going to rotate um, in the, not the Y, but this should be Z um, direction. So I'll do 360 for this. And you can see it's already starting to do this, uh, this pattern for us. But now we can do lock position. I'm going to say lock size too. And then we're just going to take this and move it out in this direction. And that's starting to give us the pattern that we're looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and scale this thing down at that point. And it's starting to give us these individual cubes that you see here. And at any point, if we wanted to turn that into a negative shape, we just click this on here like this. But we're still using the array mesh just like we did for these cuts that are here in this area. So it's kind of a uh, definitely a powerful, a powerful way to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a solo for this. So we're just looking at this. If I turn on the poly frame, we can look at this. The reason you don't see poly frames on all these, these are the array meshes, and this is the original mesh that is basically a copy or an instance of that. So this is the only thing that we really kind of need to worry about that we're working on. Um, I wanted to turn it into a shape like this. So I'm holding down control. I'm going to drag a marquee around these points on top here and then hold down control and then click. That'll invert the mask. And at that point I can hold down alt, click on our go to unmask center, and then we can start to scale these points in. We can get really close like this. And then I'm going to hold down control, 
mask these points in the center, then hold down to control tap in the open viewport, and that should give us this here. I'm gonna hold down alt, click on that, and then scale these in. So we're able to, like on the fly, kind of change the design about this a bit. So the next thing I'm going to add in here is this. I'm gonna to go to the Z modeler um, brush. It's, it's considered a brush, but it's gonna allow us to work with edges, verts, and faces. So I can click it here for my interface. If you don't have the interface, which I highly recommend that you get, and it'll make your life a lot easier, but we can go to B and then Z, and then we can find the Z modeler right here. So once you have this enabled, I'm gonna take the cursor and move it down really slow, uh, really low. So I'll just tap S and then drag that down, or you can hold down S and then do the slider. And then if I hover my cursor over verts or edges or faces, it's gonna give me different options if I hold down the space bar. So I wanna work with edges right now, and I'm gonna hold down space bar, and I'm gonna say, put this on insert like this. And then what insert will allow me to do is click on this and then add a new loop within here. So I'm gonna make it uh, right about in here in this area. And then I'm gonna hover my cursor over a face and I'm gonna use Q mesh, which is gonna do a specific type of instruction uh, extrusion that they have within the program. I'm gonna tell it to do a polygroup um, polygroup island and this will take a look at this if you view this as an island and it's sitting all by itself um, you can see these polygroups there by itself so i'm going to tell it to do a q mesh and actually not q mesh i'm, I'm sorry i'm going to do an um i'm going to do an inset and i'll do polygroup um, island just like what we had before and then i'll do inset region like this and now if I click and drag you should see something to the effect of this as it's kind of pulling in. Now I don't really like what it's doing to these two points right within here so I can hold down control and I can mask those out, invert the mask and I can put it on the move tool, hold down alt, click on here and then we can just kind of drag down within there. Now it is moving that center P, that center point, I can mask that and then that way I'm just moving just these pieces that you see here. So I can drag that down and we'll get something that looks like this. So the next thing we could do is I, I want to turn this into basically a, a big um, bevel at this point. So there there is different ways of going about this. Be, because we have polygroups, we could hold down control and shift and then hide this part, hold down control, mask that, and then um, start to mask the rest of this out like this. Um, let's see here, if I hold down control and mask that out, I could put this on move and then just push this up. So that's one way of going about it. Uh, the other way that I'm gonna try to do here is we're gonna use the Z modeler uh, brush, hold over an edge and then just use space bar and we're gonna use delete and we're gonna do delete edge loop complete and we'll get rid of that just like this. So you can see that works rather well. Uh, the other thing we can do um, that ZBrush has the ability to do is uh, select edge loops. And that if you put it on a selection lasso, and I'm gonna tell it to skip note until next restart, um, we can hold down uh, control and shift and then click on that and that'll hide just that section like this. And I'll hold down Control and Shift to bring everything back for this. Um, but to get to that, if you hold down Control and Shift, if you don't have the interface where this sits, is if you go to uh, Stroke, and normally it's just on a drag rectangle for this, you can put it on the lasso. Now, usually if you want to find anything on this custom interface and you can't remember where it sits, you can hold Control over it, and you can see at the very bottom it says Button Path Brush Select Lasso. And so I know this sits here, that might be a little bit confusing, um, but it's basically telling you that stuff sits within here. If you go into brush, uh, it also sits within this area under the brush menu too. So why I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna hold down control and shift and I'm selecting this loop that you see here. And if I wanna get the inverse of that, I can hold down control and shift and I'll just draw a little loop like that. And now I can hit control W and that'll make a poly group out of what we see is visible. And that actually sits right in here under poly groups. Um, 
you can see group visible if you have your cursor over that. It doesn't show you the hotkey for that for some reason, but uh, that's where that would be. If you want to hold down control and shift and bring everything back, you can do that. And then I want these two isolated as well, and I'm going to make that into a, a poly group. So sometimes with this lower amount of geometry, it has trouble selecting some of this stuff. If I hold down control and shift and then drag a lasso around these two there, it's just going to show that and I can hit control W. And I'm doing all this because I'm going to hold and be able to crease these edges. So we are able to turn on dynamic subdivision levels. If we tap D, you can see it's going to act like it's going to add subdivision levels. This is a thing that they added to the program that's pretty neat. And if you go under geometry, we've got dynamic subdiv. And basically what it's doing is it's smoothing the model. This would be zero. This is the base cage. One, two, three, four subdivisions. So you can see if we push it up really high, everything's nice and smooth. Now the more geometry you have, um, you know, the, the more performance heavy this is going to be. And what we have in ZBrush is the ability to do some creasing on our edges. And this is pretty cool. Now, if we turn off dynamic sub subdiv right here like that, you can tap D or hit shift D to turn that on and off. If we get rid of that and we do creasing, we can see what's going to happen here. We can crease um, all of our polygroups. So we'll crease polygroup right here like that. And it's going to put these creases along all these. So now when we tap D to do this, um, this shape that we've got going on here, you can see what it's going to do. Now, I don't like what it just did to this back part. So to fix that, I'm going to hit Shift-D to just take a look at this. If you remember, we can hold down Control-Shift, click on this this part here. If we get too many other parts to this that we don't want, we can hold down Control-Shift and then click on that, and that will start removing selections from it. And now I'm going to hold down Control-Shift, and I just want to get these polygons back here and isolate them. And I'm going to hit Control-W. I'm going to hit control shift and then bring everything back at that point like that and then now we'll go back to crease we'll say crease polygroup and tap d and then we can take a look and see what we got going on for this um, this part here now i kind of don't like how this is put together with that i'm going to hold on control and shift and what i'm going to do is try to get this isolated from this here. Um, probably what I want to do is just hold down control and shift and select on that edge to get that edge loop that we got going on there. And then I want to remove the visibility of these polygons. So you hold down control and shift like you like we're used to. If you add the alt modifier to it, it subtracts. So here I'll do that again. Control shift uh, with the lasso and then you hold down uh, just tap actually hold down alt and then drag through and it'll get rid of those poly polygons so i'm going to hit control w and i'm turning that all into one big poly group i'm going to hold down control shift and then click and bring everything back and you can see take a look at these really nice clean shapes that we have so i know that's a, a lot of work to to get us there for this uh, i think i'm upside down with this yeah so i'm going to rotate back into place here and then we've got it on solo let's take it off solo take it off the polyframe here and then now take a look we have just used um, a really powerful system to do a complex pattern inside of ZBrush so we've used the array mesh we've been able to use the Z modeler to do a little bit of modeling and a little bit of editing to this and then creasing edges is gonna give you really crisp clean geometry um, now I know this is probably pretty complex for people when you're just first starting off. Um, but I think it's going to open up a lot of possibilities for you. And there, there's probably some people that might be ready for that and they could probably handle it. So if it becomes pretty confusing for you, that's, that's okay. Um, just go through the video and watch it multiple times. The next thing I'm going to do is show you about the array mesh and show you another pattern type that we can do. And I'm just going to zoom out. I was getting some performance lag just because of uh, how many times that that model was actually smoothed in there. So um, I can drop that down. And you can see it's more faceted in here at that point. But I can push it up and try to get something that looks decent and has a decent amount of performance for it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go to Subtool 
and I'll just take this uh, cube top cut. You, we could use any of the cubes that we want for this. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. And then I'm going to go ahead and send this to the very bottom. If you want to send something to the very bottom of the stack, instead of just hitting this a bunch of times, you can hold down shift and click on it, and it'll shoot it all the way down to the very bottom. So I'm going to take this, put it on the gizmo tool, push it down here in this area. I'm going to scale this thing down just like this, get this cube pattern, push it in here, just like what we did with the last one. Uh, this one, I'm going to get it set up in the corner and we're going to do a duplicate of it moving all the way down through here like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and open up the array mesh area. I'm going to hold down shift and then click array and I'm going to click array mesh like this. And we're going to do repeat and I'm going to put about 18 repeats on this. At this point, what we could do, um, I'm going to show you this. this. This would be another thing that could be potentially a little bit confusing for people. If I put it on uh, transpose and then take it off the gizmo tool, and if I use the, um, the, the uh, transpose tool, I can click and then drag out a line. And if I click and drag out and hold down shift and go down here like this, I can click on this middle uh, little circle and then click and then drag. And you can see it's dragging out uh, the copies that we have. And you can see we've got the, uh, the repeat on here and you can click and drag on that and you can interactively change the number and the value for that. So that becomes a pretty powerful tool for you if you click and drag you can um, you can get that to go a little bit uh, lower. If you take a look, what's actually going on is this tool is driving this offset amount. So let's say we wanted it to be a very specific number. You could type in 26 for this. Uh, you could type in 20, and you can see it's going to shorten that thing up. You can change the repeat number that you got within here. So it's a pretty powerful system. But if you wanted to do something that's a bit more uh, visual, and see the feedback that way, you could do it that way as well. So the Array Mesh also has this ability to um, do multiple multiple arrays. So I was able to do this first array, and then I can say append new, and that's going to do this transform stage, and it's going to add a new stage for us. And then now that we're on stage two, what we could do is with this offset amount is just click and drag this thing over like this right through here. So if I put that on seven, which looks maybe a little bit too high, we'll see it here in a second. And if I put this repeat up to, let's try four uh, like this. And then now I can take this uh, amount and just shift it over. So let's try five and... So I'm just going to keep uh, trying some numbers here and try to get it somewhat where I want it to be. So I think that works uh, pretty pretty well. So that's going to give us uh, this nice array kind of grid pattern. And again, we can go and go to this and turn it into a negative shape just like that. And if we don't like um, how this thing uh, sits within here, we can take this part here, the gizmo tool, and then just push this out. And if you want it to be deeper, you can push it in. So it's uh, up to you what you want to do with the design at that point. So for this next part, I want to knock out uh, these middle cubes. And what we can do at that point to turn this into actual real geo, if you want to take any of your array meshes and turn it to actual real geo, you've got to use this make mesh. I'm not going to turn off this extrude open edges thing. I don't want that as an option. Um, but you saw that at stage two, uh, this is grayed out. So we click over to stage one, which is what we made for this array going down this way. So we'll go ahead and click once for this make mesh button. And you can see it's still gray. So we've got to click it again for the second part of the array. And we'll say click make mesh. And now at that point, these are just uh, regular geometry. You've created the array mesh and converted it over to a regular piece of geometry. So now I'm going to put it on the solo mode and I'm just going to tap P 
to turn off perspective like this. I'll tap F to frame it up and then zoom out just a little bit. And if we hold down Control and Shift, let's make sure we're using the stroke type of the rectangle and not the lasso. This will make it easier for us to select these inner parts. We'll just hold down Control and Shift and then click and then drag out. And while you're doing that, if you add the spacebar modifier, you can move this into a new location. So I'm just going to get this framed up over these center objects like this, and then we'll hold down Alt and add the Alt modifier to this, and that turns the positive into negative. So that means this is going to take the visibility and hide those parts. So just go ahead and click and release the mouse whenever you're ready. And you can see we've hid those inner parts. I'll tap P to turn perspective back on. And I can hit Alt S or click off the solo button. And now we've taken those parts and we've been able to hide them and then use the array mesh to make a more complex pattern. So I've shown you how to do a circle pattern and then I've shown you how to uh, do these vertical and horizontal patterns. Don't forget, while it's in that array mesh mode, you always have the ability to go back to these cubes and you could be altering them with the Z modeler tools and you could make the design a lot more complex than what we see here. And obviously we don't have to just use cubes. You can use any piece of geometry that you want uh, for the array mesh. So it opens up a whole lot of really cool possibilities for you. In this last part, we're gonna take a look at how we can take our Boolean mesh and turn it into actual geometry and take it out of this live Boolean mode. So let's go ahead and go here. The one thing I haven't kind of told you about this is on the interface, they have these little arrow down things. And basically, if you click this, this creates something and it says start at that point. What it's saying is with the live Boolean system, this is the start of a live Boolean. And you can see with our stack that we've got, and I'm gonna increase this uh, quite a bit here. Um, with our stack that we've got, we've got quite a few different meshes that's making up the totality of our mesh that we have going on here. Um, but if we wanted to split this off and have anything become a new start, almost like a new part, and anything below it started to do its own booleans, we would be able to basically click at any point this start icon that you see here. Now, I have just kind of turned all this off and I've instructed ZBrush to look at this and say now you're gonna say this is the the starting mesh and we're gonna cut from everything from here and that's obviously why I changed the design quite a bit and we don't really want that but just for um, clarity's sake on what's actually going on here with this I wanted to make sure you knew that this is a possibility for you to be able to do this for your designs I'll click this back off I'll turn this back into a, a negative shape at this point and then if I click on this top mesh what I can do is go and um, go down to this area under subtool. Sorry, I'm gonna close up geometry, open up subtool, and then we're gonna go to the Boolean area right here, and we're gonna click Make Boolean Mesh. Now, depending on the complexity of the model, it's gonna take a little while for it to generate this thing and uh, make the Boolean Mesh. You can see it's gonna give you a uh, union meshing in progress, and go ahead and hit Escape if you needed to escape out of it. That can be a little bit dangerous at times. Um, so it's going to feel weird because it's going to be like it didn't really do anything, did it? But if you go into this tool area and you click on the U mesh that it spit out and we turn on the polyframe, you can see what it did. It took the model and it joined everything together. Um, the topology is not good topology at all, but we're not really concerned about topology at this point. We're just concerned about it spitting out this uh, model for us. So it's going to do a really smart job it keeps all these different poly groups and everything so it's actually really cool what the uh, what the tool does for us I'm gonna go ahead and delete this real quick and then I'm gonna show you a different method so I'm gonna hop back over to our pillar model turn off the polyframe I want to show you this one thing that they've got going on here if I wanted to round the corners they've got something that's kind of interesting for that if we uh, go under geometry and we go to our dynamic subdiv, um, not dynamesh, if we go to dynamic subdiv and we turn that on, this is gonna round out this pillar. And if you remember, we can go take up the amount of subdivision levels on this. So we could really crank this up like this. So obviously that's uh, changing the design quite a bit. And that's not exactly what we're looking for. But uh, what I could do is turn on this Q grid and crank this up a bit. I don't think at this time I need uh, really high subdivision levels. 
But you can see it's set to uh, bevel, and then we've got this coverage, which basically shows like how far out this thing goes. You could put on a chamfer, and a chamfer is, I guess, m a little more rounded, but the bevel is a bit more squared off, um, which seems to be the opposite to me for like what I'm used to in a lot of different programs. But um, So if I up that number for the Q grid, it kind of tightens that up a bit. And then if we find the right amount of coverage, I think something in this vicinity, uh, 0.15, might be kind of cool. Something like that. And then if you remember, we also used um, these dynamic subdivs on this shape within here. So I'm going to tap F and then just frame this up. And then we're going to go back and we're going to go um, to the subtool area and go to the Boolean area and this time if we're using this dynamic subdiv make sure you use this button so I'm going to click it and it's going to go ahead and run and it's going to go ahead and calculate that uh, sorry I need to have this turned on as an option so I'll click make boolean mesh and it's going to go ahead and think through the process and it should make a whole brand new mesh for us and we can take a look at this and you can see Take a look at what it did. If we turn on the polyframes, it actually did all the rounding in the corners and increased geometry and held all these edges in here. So it made some really nice geometry for us. At this point, the very last stage is us taking this and converting it over to DynaMesh. So I'm just going to duplicate our mesh. This way I can just be a little bit more flexible with things and I don't have to worry about it damaging this model up here. I could turn off the visibility of it. Then we can go to Geometry and we can go open up DynaMesh and then this is where we get a resolution for this so it's gonna make all brand new topology if we turn on the polyframe for this you can see how kinda of nasty this whole thing is but if we use DynaMesh and I'm gonna start with a number of about 500 to 700 and click DynaMesh I'm gonna turn off the blur because that kinda of softens things up and we'll have to let it run for just a second and we'll see the results of what it produces. So take a look at here, uh, what we've got. So you can see it did the best job it could to try to retain the fact that it's using these poly groups and holding that and then made this new geometry. And I, again, I wouldn't call this good geometry, but this is just good enough for us to start sculpting on. If I turn off the polyframe, you can see it's pretty darn chunky. So that resolution, I'm going to need to up that quite a bit. So I'm going to try 1500 and go up that high already and then click uh, DynaMesh and wait for the program to finish this process right here. And the higher you go, it's obviously going to take longer to process and take longer to think through it. Um, that's why I've been using it enough that um, I know numbers that seem to, to work, and but be a little bit careful about raising this up too quickly. You can overwhelm your system, and then um, it would put it in bad, bad shape at that point. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you, let's take a look at the polyframe, and now you can see we've got a, a lot more polys to work with on there, and that looks pretty good. Um, on my interface, I have this thing called Clay Polish, and if we ran that, it kind of crispens up edges. It might do a little bit of rounding on corners. I'm going to hit Undo for that real quick, and I'll show you where that sits. It's under Geometry, under Clay Polish. You could hit that. Um, on my interface, I also have this thing that I use quite a bit, and it's called Polish. So if I run the Polish slider, it'll polish this up. Um, so I'm just going to do zero. I'm going to show you where it actually sits. And remember, if we hold down control over this, you can find where anything on the interface that's pulled off, button path, tool, deformation, polish. So here we are, deformation, we've got polish. And if you uncheck this little thing right here, it's going to make it a lot stronger. So I'm just going to run this and put it at about 39, 40, somewhere in that vicinity. Again, depending on how much geometry you have, it's going to take a certain amount of time to run these processes that you have. But you can see this rounds out the corners quite a bit, okay? Um, so this, as we move into the next stage, I'm going to start showing you how to roughen up our corners and everything else like that. But this is this is actually a technique that uh, people use in industry for combining models together and then running this uh, polish on here to kind of round out the corners a little bit. And if you're baking normal maps and other programs and stuff like that, it uh, actually pr produces a nice effect because it, 
you can see how it catches highlights on the edges here. So nothing in the real world has these crisp, perfect CG edges, and so that's the dead giveaway for CG objects. So that's a nice way of being able to round out the corners a bit for this. So um, I definitely wanted to show you guys the array mesh um, parts, but um, the one thing we could do is go back to our design and just turn off this element and then turn off this element as well. Um, I'll let you play around and choose what you want to do, but later on we're going to do a specific technique in this area, so I kind of want to leave this area alone. We want to probably do some um, panels and things like that and some grooves with brushes, so I'm going to turn off this thing here. If you want to do uh, your own pattern, you're free to do that, but I would leave leave a little bit of space, oops, sorry, leave a little bit of space kind of in this area and here a little bit, okay? So I just at least wanted you to get familiar with that. And again, you can always go back to your design. And the cool thing about this whole uh, live booleans thing is we can turn on and off parts and pieces, and then we could go ahead and just make a whole brand new Boolean mesh. And we're kind of working in this non-destructive way. So it just made a new union mesh that you see here. And again, we would have to go through that process of going to geometry, go to DynaMesh, open that up, put this at about 1500, turn down the blur, click DynaMesh, let it do its thing. And then after that, we could run the polish on it. Okay, so I could use this slider here, or I could open up the deformation area, and then go to polish, and then put this again at about 40, with the middle part turned off, and that'll run the polish. And then I'll turn off the polyframe, and you can see we've got a nice clean mesh to start working with. So a really cool feature that they added for ZBrush 2019 is the folder structure system that they have in the subtools area. And this works really well with live bullying. So if we click the new folder icon, we can just make a new folder and call this pillar like this. And uh, because we had this top part selected, it's going to go ahead and put that in there. And I can click and I can drag into this area. And I'm just going to click and drag and then keep the order exactly the same as what I had it before, like this. And I'll put even the standard cube, even parts that you want to have hidden, you can put that in there. And you can expand and collapse the folder group. Now they've got some options within here under this gear icon where you can actually click this and you can say uh, Boolean folder. Now this is going to be the normal Boolean. We just looked at the option down here for Booleans if we want to use the uh, dynamic subdivision, subdiv uh, part. Um, let's go ahead and click on this and take it back at this point. So for some reason every now and then I've got to select the actual part and then make sure that the eye icon is uh, visible and then shake this to get the live Boolean thing to register. But uh, what I was trying to uh, make the point of is the equivalent of turning on this button for the dynamic subdiv and then make boolean mesh is the same thing as us going up through here and instead of doing just boolean folder which is make boolean mesh down below if we want to use the dynamic subdiv we say boolean with dynamic subdiv we click that it runs through the same process makes the mesh the cool thing is it makes this whole new union mesh right underneath the folder and it actually turns off the visibility of the folder so you can close it up so this becomes a really nice option for you to work in a non-destructive way it's a little bit easier to work with than these union meshes that get thrown up into uh, this area so when you're actually working with a bigger project you can keep everything nice and organized in these folders then you can click and uh, have it produce the union mesh and then have the union mesh directly underneath the folder and then it's going to hide that for you and then that starts to be the new thing that you work with and if you ever need to go back to some of this stuff and rechange some of the options and stuff it exists for you there so it's just a nice clean system and it just makes using booleans that much easier okay so i've thrown a whole lot of tools at you and i know this is probably going to be pretty tough for the very beginning but again if we talk about the large medium and small forms spend the adequate amount of time on these large forms and make sure that you have a very solid foundation for the rest of the project that you're going to build because now we're going to start doing some medium level detail and eventually do uh, like low level detail or the tertiary forms and those don't change the surface a whole lot but if you don't have this part kind of nailed down and you don't have your design well thought out 
it's going to carry through on all those different stages and you're not going to be able to easily go back to this stage and fix this. You, you could, but it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be very difficult for you. So make sure you spend the adequate amount of time on this phase, get your design working in a way that you really like the design. And then as you push it through the different uh, parts of the process, you're going to have a much more successful project at the very end.